The member for Light. Uh, thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. And, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, I, I rise in support of this motion for, for the Premier to amend our standing orders to uh, reflect um, the acknowledgement of country. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, um, changes like this are, by, the, by their very nature, symbolic. Uh, but uh, having said that, I think sometimes symbolism is very important because it does speak to our values. And uh, we actually uh, have a lot of symbols in our society uh, which by themselves mean nothing, but when they're put into context and they talk about our culture, what we believe in and what we actually hold dear, it is very important. And so this is a, a symbolic change, but a very important change because it does speak to those values, as I said. And it's important that our values, uh, value, we, we understand our values because they actually inform our actions. Um, people often, um, it's very important that we have the right framework, the right values, to ensure that the actions we take in this area of policy are the appropriate ones. I would also add, though, Mr uh, Acting Speaker, the acknowledgement is very important, as I said, as a symbolic gesture, but it's not sufficient, and we need to make sure we do a lot more to, to, to put into practice those things which we hold dear to us. And certainly this government is doing that. Uh, this government has, a, has what I believe a bold agenda when it comes to Aboriginal affairs. It has an agenda which will hopefully not only catch up on ground lost uh, in the past four years, but also move ahead and set the agenda for future governments uh, uh, in this area. Uh, I think one of the most important things which must be said is that this government is very clear in its in its way, it will do business with Aboriginal people. It is important that we, as a society, uh, work alongside Aboriginal people and enable them to uh, realise their aspirations. Um, sadly, if we are honest with ourselves, we do have a, a very bleak history in when we deal with Aboriginal affairs. Um, if, if you like, there were some... Um, if you'd you like to categorise some of the phases of our relationships between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people would be that initially we did it to them, we sort of moved them off their land, uh, we killed them, uh, the whole range of things we did in the early days of colonisation of this country. And then we went through the early welfare era where we actually did it for them and we made Aboriginal people very dependent uh, on, white, on white or non-Aboriginal society. And that was in some ways quite damaging uh, because it, it didn't enable Aboriginal culture to evolve over time as all cultures evolve over time. And we sort of, and we sort of uh, stopped uh, Aboriginal people from uh, evolving in, the, in their culture to the modern era. So hopefully this latest era of our relationship with Aboriginal people is about working alongside them. It is important that we work alongside them, that we take off our European, in most cases, our European lens and try to understand Aboriginal, Aboriginal people's aspirations through their eyes. And, that, and I'll speak a bit more about that in a few moments, Mr. Speak, Mr. Acting Speaker. And I think that's important to know that because um, sometimes I'm guilty of still sometimes looking at uh, issues which impact on Aboriginal people through European eyes. And we can only honestly address those issues when we see, see the issue through their eyes. And I, uh, I've had the benefit of both men and women, Aboriginal men and women in my community, who've pulled me aside and had chats with me and talked to me about things. And they did it in a very positive way. They did it to educate me, uh, which was really important. And I did learn a lot. And often we, when we have acknowledgements of country, uh, sorry, welcome to country, um, the Aboriginal person who actually welcomes the country often actually explains some things to us. And that's a very important thing because we need to understand what is behind those words. We need to understand what those words mean uh, to Aboriginal people because there is a danger if we just do these acknowledged countries at every event. If you don't understand their mini meaning, they actually have, it actually doesn't mean much. It can be tokenistic. And I think it's important that as non-Aboriginal people, we, are, we need to go beyond being tokenistic what we, in our relationship with Aboriginal people and try to understand why these words are important. And we need to try to understand uh, to understand the, the issues which we confront, but through their, their eyes. Uh, 
as I said, Mrs. Mr. Acting Speaker, we, we do, as a government, have a very uh, bold uh, agenda for Aboriginal affairs, which, which, is, which is good. Uh, underlying that, that broad agenda is that our acknowledgement and recognition that, uh, of the right for self-determination by Aboriginal people as a, a, quite a discrete cultural group. And that's a right which is actually enjoyed by all cultures right across the world. In fact, the right to self-determination is one of the very first articles in the United Nations articles, which actually formed the United Nations. With the rights of self-determination, it doesn't matter whether you're like myself, of an Italian background or Greek background, or you, you have, uh, whatever the, your background, your culture, you have a right to self-determination. And that doesn't mean, uh, self-determination doesn't mean you live apart from other people, it means that you are acknowledged for the culture you were born in, and you integrate that culture with a broader culture. And certainly, uh, we have right around the world, uh, in addition to our own local indigenous people, we also have other cultures which don't, don't actually enjoy self-determination, and hopefully we should address that. And as a nation, uh, and both as a state, we should lobby for those sort of things to happen when we can. Uh, underpinning the self-determination, again, listening to the voices of, of the Aboriginal people themselves, what is important to them. They've actually invited us to join them in a conversation about, about the relationship between Aboriginal people and non-Aboriginal people through the uh, Uluru Statement. And one of the most important things about the Uluru Statement is an invitation. It makes it very clear as Aboriginal people, they're inviting us to walk alongside with them, to, to have conversations with them and to understand who they are and their experience. And that's what the Uluru Statement's about. It is sad the way Uluru Statement has been, um, has been um, talked about in some political circles um, as something which will actually would undermine our democracy or um, Australian sovereignty. That could be nothing further from the truth. What the, what the Uluru Statement talks about is about three important things. is about uh, voice, treaty and truth. Ensuring that Aboriginal people have a voice in our society to the parliament where, where laws are passed and policies made, which is uh, an important treaty. is about reaching an understanding uh, of our respective roles in society, in this community, what we call Australian. How, how do we learn to coexist in a peaceful way which actually benefits both Aboriginal people and non-Aboriginal people? We need to come to that understanding how we actually also uh, acknowledge the past through, the, through this, some sort of treaty process. Uh, and treaty, in some ways, is about, in essence, if you want to put it in a spiritual sense, it's about people coming to peace with each other. It's actually finding a way to, to coexist in a peaceful way. The other thing which we also talked about is truth. Uh, it is true, I think, um, that no nation can advance itself unless it's truthful and honest about its past. Uh, we saw that in South Africa, where they had a truth commission. We've seen that in other, in other countries. We've also seen it in some countries where they don't want to acknowledge the truth, and so they have internal conflict time and time again. Um, one just has to look at the United States of America, um, where when you, when you look at it deeply, and it was put, put to me recently, that the United States of America have been at war ever since, you know, white the Europeans settled there, have been at war, either with other nations or with themselves. You know, war of independence, you know, the civil war, uh, you know, the, the, the riots in, in the 60s and 70s were for rights for black people in America. It's a nation which has actually been at war with others or with itself continuously. You know, there is always some, some strife in America and it continues today. And in part, that is because I don't think America as a nation has actually come to terms with its past, acknowledge its past. Um, and so hopefully we do not make the same mistake that that nation does. One of the first steps we're we undertaking as a government, Mr Acting Speaker, is to uh, enshrine our First Nations voice into the South Australian Parliament. This will allow Aboriginal people in our state to have a direct input into the decisions made about them. Extensive consultation has been led by the Commissioner for First Nations Voice, Dale Aegis, and are currently underway within the South Australian Aboriginal community. This will be followed by restarting the treaty process in our state and establishing a truth-telling uh, process that recognises all aspects of our past. 
which comes to the next point, Mr. S Mr. Acting Speaker, that our past, again through symbols, through statues and monuments, talks about our non-Aboriginal past. It is time that we also acknowledge our Aboriginal past through statues, etc. And they're important. The absence of statues and monuments towards our Aboriginal people reinforces the terra nullis concept, that they didn't exist here. It was a, a, a blank, uh, if you like, canvas. Well, it wasn't. There were Aboriginal people who were living here for 60,000 years. Mr. S Mr Acting Speaker, with those few comments, I would certainly support this motion and ask the Chamber to support it. 